Unknown horrors creep up from the Tallahassee swamp, more terrifying than anything in human creation. A legislature that set its sights on our democratic process, hoping to devour it whole. Florida's infrastructure and environment torn asunder while big money feasts on the wreckage. All this and more in this week's Florida AFL-CIO Legislative Update. Can you guess how big the creature itself must be? Yeah. But we won't have to guess at it, Dan. We'll see for ourselves. Week after week, bill after bill, arcane forces in the Florida legislature have continued their ominous onslaught against the people's right to direct democracy. Senate Bill 1794. Its ruinous rampage continued. If passed, it would effectively destroy our right to amend our Constitution through citizen initiative. Senator Thurston, you're recognized. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Hudson, you said that one of the main things was fraud, but you didn't have any evidence in fraud. We've had a number of uh, petition initiatives, um, and none of those have you been able to determine that there was fraud present? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Like I said, I, I don't have any evidence out there right now. Um, I know that when we passed uh, the citizens initiative, uh, it was actually opponents of it said last year said that there's no way to figure out whether there's fraud or not because there was no teeth in the bill. So we're now coming back and putting a little more teeth in it. Chair, thank you. Uh, this amendment simply gives the bill a, a name. Uh, we often name uh, legislation that's important here. And this, uh, it, it would name the bill uh, the Direct Democracy Limitation Act. The initiative process really is seen as a way to check the le this legislature when this legislature refuses to act on things like land and water conservation, minimum wage, medical marijuana, and those sorts of things. So that, that is the proposal to give this bill a name because what it does is limit direct democracy. And I think this legislature, if they're going to pass this bill, let's give it a name and tell our constituents what this legislation is doing. Good morning. I swam over from Live Oak today. Uh, even... <laughs> Even though you all voted down Senator Rodriguez's his amendment um, labeling this what it is, limiting democracy, I hope you all will realize that's what this bill does, and I hope you'll vote against it. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Dave Cohen for Sierra Club, Florida. Very quickly, if it walks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> Please post the bill. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Benacquisto, members of the committee. I'm Kara Gross, Legislative Director for the ACLU of Florida, and the ACLU of Florida opposes this bill. Floridians' right to participate directly in our democracy is protected under Florida's Constitution. The legislature should be protecting Floridians' constitutional rights, not restricting them. In 2004, we shortened the time period for the campaigns. We added a fiscal in, in, uh, impact statement only on citizens' initiative. In 2005, we raised the threshold to 60%. We shortened the lifespan of signatures, the ability to close uh, me, uh, FEIC meetings. In 2007, we put a new petition revocation uh, process in place. We made a 30-day requirement on signature verification. We closed traditionally public-private spaces where people could even gather signatures. In 2008, no bundling of provisions. In 2011, we cut the validity of signatures again. That validity time has now gone from eight years to four years to two years. This bill makes it just over a year. In 2019, you passed a major uh, change to this system. The ink isn't even dry on the rules yet. We don't know what the impact of that is going to be. Why the rush? Now, Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the Founders instituted alternative methods to, uh, for obtaining constitutional amendments because they knew that the legislature at times would be unwilling to give attention to many of the issues that people are concerned with. The Founders foresaw this and provided the constitutional initiative process as a remedy. While it should be difficult to get on to amend the Constitution, it should not be impossible. While I support the increased transparency provisions in this legislation um, and believe that those should move forward, uh, I do not support the petitions or judicial review portions of this because I believe they're burdensome and close to legislative bondage. I will not support this bill on the floor if those provisions remain, and, but I will support it today. Thank you. It passed the Senate Rules Committee 10 to 7, where it will continue to wreak havoc in the full Senate. We're facing a new form of life that nobody understands. 
I believe it feeds on the radiation from your atomic plants and that it's evil. Florida is notorious for abandoning its infrastructure, education system, and environment, all in the name of tax cuts for mega corporations, hurting our small business community and the well being of our residents. This week, House Bill 7097 continued the nefarious tradition, cutting taxes for gargantuan special interests, which suck the profits from our state and transfer them to their hives of corporate greed. I wanted to share some numbers with you really quickly. According to the United Way, no liberal bastion, ALICE report, and that stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained But Employed, um, we have 3.2 million households. That's 45% of all households in the state are considered ALICE. That's working poor, legislators. Almost half of all our households are considered the working poor. They're never talked about in this building. They're, they're never really addressed in this building, but they're there. And that number has held for the last two iterations of, of the report. That means four years. Florida's poverty rate continues to be higher than the national average. Florida has a lot of problems that are often not brought into these rooms. And a big part of some of that is because we lack the revenue to address some of these in creative ways. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this large tax package contains $80 million in loss of recurring revenue to the state budget, $80 million. Um, we have a housing crisis, a mental health crisis, an opioid crisis, an algae bloom crisis, an education crisis, a health care crisis, as you've discussed some of them here, yet this has an $80 million reduction recurring revenue every year. Some of these things just seem like naked giveaways. I mean, the, the thing going to the, the auto leasing and rental, Companies, why are we doing that? Um, and the, the biggest, though, and I, I, I can't pass up what was said about aviation fuel tax when the airports are saying we need this. But the biggest thing here, the worst thing I've seen us do since I've been here, members, was cut that communication services tax. In, I think it was 2015. That year, it turned out that we were given 61 cents a month, a month, to people. Uh, that's not enough to notice. This year, conveniently, we don't seem to know. I guess that's a better answer than admitting how little it does. But here's the truth. The less dependent we are on huge corporations like Allegiant Air and Avis Rental Car, the more dependent we are on Florida families to pay the share of the burden. House Bill 7097 passed the House Appropriations Committee and will head to the floor. Darkness falls on the Sunshine State. Florida's once heralded government transparency at risk of total annihilation. Senate Bill 774, which would allow the state to hide the search for college and university presidents from the public, continued onward into the final weeks. The boards of trustees are political appointees. They are not part of that university community. If they simply put out two or three names without people being able to see those who were not chosen to be in that final pool, the faculty, the students, the parents will not trust it. You are driving a wedge into our community. Mr. Templin. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Anna. Chiz I sat here this morning and listened to a lot of discussion on transparency, and it felt like every single member of this community was in favor of transparency. This bill is the opposite of transparency. This tucks the search for administrators who will be in charge of public funds in the billions of dollars at our colleges and universities. It hides their hiring process from key stakeholders. First of all, I don't see any justification for including the state college system. We're talking, uh, we want to talk about all these high profile jobs around the country people don't want to apply for, but this includes the state college system. These aren't high profile jobs. Most state college system jobs aren't high profile. So why they're, they're lumped in here, I don't understand. Um, but without a process that defines how 
university and state college presidents are hired, we can't have a public records exemption. What Senator Brandis is arguing for is more reforming the rights of the university or state college system to use a search firm to conceal sunshine from the public, not that we need this bill. And so, you know, I, I just, I'm sorry. I think this is going to embarrass us. Uh, I'm not going to support this. I've listened to the, the conversation here. I would urge this committee to, to dispose of this today. Thank you. It passed the Senate Rules Committee 9 to 7, continuing on to the full Senate. Concerned about the future of our state, worried that the devious decisions of our legislature leave us doomed to destruction, all is not lost. The dedicated warriors of the Working Families Lobby Court are fighting back and winning. They are doing their part. My name is April Isaacs. I am a representative of OCEA, Osceola County Education Association, from Kissimmee. I think, like a lot of people here, we're wondering why we volunteered to be here in the first place. And the moment that we get here and we hear what's going on in Tallahassee, which the everyday person doesn't know or doesn't have time to listen to because they're working two and three jobs to put food on the table, I know why I'm here. I'm here to represent those people. I'm Brian Porter with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, local 756 in Daytona Beach. And we're here to fight against the bad legislation that they're always trying to pass. I suggest everybody else get up here and do the same. It's an eye-opening experience and everybody needs to participate. Solidarity! This concludes week seven. As the end of the session approaches, the battle is just beginning. Tune in next week as we continue to cover the shock and terror.